Hey, welcome back to Ostrich Investing. Today we're going to talk about Highliner Foods Q1 results. So specifically, Highliner reported Q1 results on May 14th, and they cut the dividend by 65%. They cut the dividend down from 58 cents a share to 28, uh, sorry, to 20 cents per share annually. And the interesting thing here is the stock price actually went up on the news. So if we take a look at the last six month stock chart, uh, the stock was trading down basically uh, over the last six months in and around the $7.25 uh, uh, $7 level, $7.50. Actually before the call it went down as low as $7.07. And when the results came out, uh, the share price has basically been up about 20% since. It's been up around the 850 range and uh, recently closing at 844. So this video will look at the rationale for the dividend cut, the Q1 results, and key takeaways for investors. So let's start with the rationale for the cut. And we'll bring up their AGM presentation and slide 17. The rationale for the cut is pretty simple. Uh, they want to reduce debt and bring the payout ratio of the dividend back in line. So on the reduced debt front, uh, they show this slide at their annual general meeting, which happened in May. And you can see that over the last year, and we talked about in previous videos, uh, debt to EBITDA or leverage on a rolling 12-month adjusted EBITDA basis had been really creeping up. In fact, it was close to six times, which is extremely high. Well, here, as at March 30th, uh, it's down to 5.0. And the company believes, and uh, it's obvious, if you're not paying money out as a dividend, it should free up about $10 million annually uh, for debt repayment. So if we actually just go back to the press release for a second here, you can see... Here we go. Uh, so they've expanded their cost savings target and here they hope to get more than $10 million in savings. That will also help reduce debt. And here's the dividend cut going down to five cents a share per quarter or 20 cents annually. The revised dividend will free up approximately 10 million annually in cash flow that will support the reduction and refinancing of debt to create a stronger balance sheet. The second point is it brings their payout ratio back in line, which they talk about next. It also brings the dividend back in line with the company's previously disclosed, disclosed guidance for dividend to provide a payout ratio of 30 to 35% adjusted EPS. And so if you think about the company's recent results last year, EPS declined sharply and the previous dividend level was no longer supported by the earnings or definitely not, it uh, wouldn't represent a 30 to 35% payout ratio. So why the dividend cut? Free up funds to pay down debt, which is extremely high, and uh, bring the payout ratio back in line. Next, we'll take a little look at uh, Q1 results. So here on page 10 of their Q1 report, uh, you can see some of the high-level uh, results that we'll talk through in a second. And I'll just start with a visual here again from their AGM, slide 19. You can see uh, in graphical form, Q1 sales were down year over year, 277 versus 319. Uh, but EBITDA was up. So here's your EBITDA. Uh, Q1 2019 of 32 uh, versus 24 in the previous period. So the quick story is revenue is down, but profitability is up. So why is the revenue down? They talked about loss of a major customer in the back half of 2018. Um, and also uh, the new CEO, Ron Heppenstall, talks about uh, eliminating lower margin products. So if you look at the sales here, 277, this is about half of the decline uh, from the three, 319 in the previous period. So half of the 40 million is related to losing customer and uh, business that they would like to have. 
The other half he talks about um, just moving away from lower margin products. So if, if they weren't making a sufficient margin on those sales to cover the fixed costs, uh, he's moving away from that. Um, and so more of a deliberate reduction in revenue. The next big thing here, gross margins are up uh, only 1.2%, but in a business like this, that can go a long way. So your gross profit uh, as a percentage of sales went from 19 to 20.2%. Now, because revenue was down 40 million, you still don't get quite the same growth, gross profit figure from a dollar perspective, but uh, a good trend to see that the percentage in terms of margin goes up and backs up the CEO story that he's trying to move away from some low margin product. The other thing I just note out here and I highlighted the number is the cost cutting is starting to show in the numbers. So they talked about um, freeing up 10 million in SG&A uh, and in the Q1 release they actually mentioned that they're going to do even better than that uh, but you can see from Q1 2018 uh, 25.3 million in SG&A and that's down one and a half million year over year. Uh, so just that alone one and a half million times four is six million that they've freed up uh, right there just in the SG&A line item. And then the last thing that I'll show on the results, and here's where it really comes together, um, is the cash flow from operations is up significantly. So if we go to page 22, you can see here the cash flow from operations of 34 million versus 23 last year. And then if you actually look at the changes in non-cash working capital, actually, Cash flow from operations, 27 million in Q1 2019 versus only 9 million a year ago. And uh, so despite revenue being down, profitability is up and more importantly, cash flows up, uh, which they're able to use to reduce debt. And so what are the key takeaways for investors? Well, number one, there's a new brand as you can see here in the AGM presentation, the modern Captain Highliner. Uh, they celebrated their 120th anniversary with a fresh new look. That's a modern looking Captain for sure. Uh, no, more seriously, um, key takeaways, the dividend cut was telegraphed. They talked about this before and they talked about their review of the dividend policy. So it shouldn't have been a surprise to investors and was likely already priced into the stock. In fact, investors are likely relieved that the dividend wasn't cut to zero. So the 20 cent dividend still represent a, represents about a two and a half percent yield. So the dividend was already priced into the stock. Number two, sales were down and they were down big, down 40 million, but margins were up and, and that drove higher cash flow from operations along with a couple of other things. So sales down, but profitability and cash flow were up. Uh, number three, Leverage is still high, it's still very high at about five times EBITDA, but trending the right way at least. So we're not getting worse. And number four, 2019 is a transition year. So a lot of the release, and we didn't talk about it specifically on this video, uh, talks about their goal to return to profitable organic growth by 2020. And this could really be the case of a new CEO. So Rod Heppenstall here, cleaning house and just setting up for growth in 2020. Uh, so getting all the bad news out of the way during 2019 and then moving forward beginning in 2020. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. Is the worst finally over for Highliner stock or is there still more bad news to come? More content coming soon, but until then, happy investing and don't bury your head in the sand.